Hello there, YouTube. Uh, thank you for all of you out there that are still uh, commenting, watching my videos. I know I haven't put anything out in a while, but uh, I'm, I'm still here and I'm still trying to fill that that niche in the video, blog, vlog, whatever. Um, there just isn't any GURPS content, and that's my favorite system, and so I am still going to keep crapping out um, juicy little corn-saturated videos for you. Um, anyhow, this video is going to be about uh, converting um, or adapting other sources to a role-playing setting. Of course, there's already content out there that if um, if you want to, like Conan or Vampire the Masquerade, is already there is a GURPS version of that. There is some world books, um, so I'm I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about doing that stuff. Of course, the the game is a, a universal system, and um, you know if I I did a I did a video before on uh, advice for, for new GMs, um, and that was pretty broad. Um, but one thing at the end I did mention in that video is I think the best uh, way, especially for a new GM or a GM that doesn't want to do a lot of work, because world building from scratch is very involved, um, but if you want something, if you want to play a role playing game, in a world that doesn't have a world book for it, you got to do some work. But uh, one of the easier ways to do it is to convert an existing uh, form of media, and that's going to be um, video games, books, movies, uh, even classical myths and and legend. How many different variations of, say, Robin Hood or King Arthur are out there? I mean, that doesn't have to be confined to just the book or just the movie. Everyone has kind of this idea in their head about what those characters are and um, adapting it to a role-playing setting is quite feasible with the group system. Um, but whatever you pick, whether it's if it's a video game, say Halo for example, would be a, a very easily adaptable um, world to um, a tabletop role-playing format, of course, um, if you play Halo because you like to uh, constantly play uh, death matches and you're not interested in the story at all and neither are your friends and it's all about getting kills, 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 it, it might not actually be a good system to do that with, but if you actually pay attention to the cutscenes and even maybe read some of the books that are out there, um, the Halo world is a, is a huge universe, and so if you're going to convert something like that, you're going to be playing that video game again, or uh, reading those books again. Uh, if you're converting, like, um, comic books, for example, um, there's a lot of different superhero um, role-playing stuff out there, but if you want to stick with, with GURPS, because... Let's face it, a lot of those other superhero role-playing games don't actually work very well. Um, you're going to be reading those comic books again. You want to brush yourself up on what information is out there. Say if you're going to take a, another well-known character like uh, Batman, for example, which version of Batman are you going to use? I mean, there's the animated series. There's several different movies. Uh, through the comic books over the years, he's gone through a large progression. But... Um, once you've decided, well, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to do Batman, or I want to do uh, Halo, or I want to do um, Robin Hood, or I want to do, um, oh, what would be a good book? Uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. That's that's what I was thinking of. Um, if you, if you want to do stuff like that, you're going to be reading that source material. You're going to be watching those movies again. Maybe you'll watch the movie with the director's commentary or an actor's commentary on on there. If it's if it's only a couple movies and you're trying to draw as much out of it 
for um, for your source material, you're really going to saturate yourself with that media. Maybe even take some notes while you're um, while you're watching uh, Batman or whatever. You know, you know, you can do this jump, or he's. I bet he's probably got an acrobatic skill of this or that, and just kind of think about it in game terms as you watch it and and, and embrace what it is, because that's going to be that's going to be your world book. You don't you don't have a world book to draw off of, so you're going to have to really get to know its its format that you're choosing. Um, once you really understand, and and maybe you already do understand the the game world that you want to delve into, but uh, at some point to make it a playable game, you're going to have to convert it. Um, and initially how you're going to do that is you're going to do things like make maps. Um, you're probably going to sketch out an outline of, um, you know, general idea. Uh, I'm thinking maybe this many points, or if using the Batman reference, maybe you're just working with Gotham City, so you're going to make a make a map of Gotham or even find one online. Um, you're going to do character sheets of some of the major players. Um, if you're doing something like the, the Chronicles of Narnia where um, it's I mean you're not working with one city and you're not working with a few key NPCs. You're going to have all sorts of monsters probably that you're going to have to work up sheets on. So you're going to do a little bit of that game world uh, background information with um, having materials available that you might not always use but it's a good idea to have that in mind because once your players are ready uh, to start making characters if you don't know how many points the monsters are going to be you've no real way to tell them how many points the characters need to be. Same thing with important NPCs. If um, if you're making uh, the Robin Hood thing, for example, and you um, do the Sheriff of Nottingham at, at 200 points, you're, you're probably going to want to um, have 100 point characters at that point. Or, um, you, you at least need to kind of know the relatives of, of those sort of point costs. Maybe not down to the minutia of how many points each one of its henchmen has, but uh, you're going to you're gonna have a good idea of what resources any villain or any uh, possible patron or ally has to bring to bear uh, to, to kind of flesh out not just the world, but also how the PCs will be able to interact in that world. And that's, uh, that's something you'll, you'll probably be doing, like I said, as you take notes and, and rework your source material. Um, once you've uh, once you've got a good idea what your source material is and have those maps and have those um, those NPCs, um, then you're going to need to start narrowing it down. Um, if, for example, going back to Halo, if that's something that you're doing, the Halo games actually stretch. I want to say 25 years if you want to count uh, Halo Wars in there all the way to uh, Halo f 5 is the last one. I don't know. I stopped, I stopped playing after 4. Anyway. I don't have an Xbox. Fuck me, right? Um, but if you're playing it, you've got 25 years of, of time span. So you can't just say, well, it's the generic Halo universe. Well, even just from game one to two, there's a difference in uh, weapons and even uh, possible equipment and allies where the uh, the Arbiter actually becomes an ally. And this is the point where you need to decide, well, are, uh, is, is this the beginning of the Human Covenant War? Is this the point where the Covenant starts to fail? Is it in the middle where they encounter the Flood for the first time? Is it um, before the Flood even exists? What you, You've got to narrow that down. And the other thing, when, you're, when you have a, a specific 
world that has recognizable characters, whether it's Robin Hood, Master Chief, Batman, Commissioner Gordon, are they going to be there? Okay, maybe Robin Hood won't be there. Okay, that's that's fine. It, it could just be that flavor of setting. Maybe it is Gotham City. Maybe Batman's retired. Maybe Commissioner Gordon's still in charge. Who's who's going to be those players? And if there's somebody like uh, the Master Chief, if they're alive at the same time, is this somebody that's going to interact with the PCs? Or in a galaxy that big, is it really going to be relevant? So those are things you got to think about too. Are those are those major players? Those very, especially the recognizable players. If it's something, um, and I mean players with a lowercase p, not player characters, but as the narrative is concerned, um, if it's if it's something that you're uh, your gaming group is familiar with, because a lot of people are, of course, familiar with Halo, familiar with Batman. They're they're gonna they're gonna probably know some of this information too. You 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 might not be the only person that's read the Chronicles of Narnia. So if they're bringing up other characters, and uh, of course that would be out of game knowledge, but. If it's something like Gotham City and they go look for Commissioner Gordon because their character happens to be a private investigator or something like that, well, that's information that they should know. And if that character's not going to be there, you've got to come up with an explanation why. And for story purposes, you got to figure out where the PCs are going to fit into everything so that way you don't have those problems that you're running into. You want to kind of figure out those things, uh, how they interact with those major NPCs before that before that happens. And also while you're kind of figuring those things out, what the story is going to be, how important these major NPCs will be, if they are important or not. This is also the point where now you've got the world, now you're familiar with the source material and you've worked on certain things that um, like probably worked up some equipment lists at this point or have a rough idea what sort of weapons that you're gonna have to uh, maybe depending on what it is you might have to make a full spreadsheet of different weapons I I could easily see um, making a uh, taking a piece of notebook paper and doing uh, 20 different weapons or more for Halo there's because there, there's not going to be anything in the books that's equivalent, and people are going to want those very specific weapons because that's kind of what the games are about. So you're gonna you're gonna have to have those things ready. But on top of that, once you get to that point that you're you're working up these lists, working up a story, etc., you're gonna you're gonna be thinking about what the point costs for the PCs are, because after you've got the game world worked up after you've got those those weapon lists made up then it's the point where you introduce it to your player characters your your gaming group would say hey what do you guys think of you introduce the the campaign to them maybe you maybe when you introduce it to them you might end up making characters that same night or um, maybe it's uh, somebody else's turn to GM and that campaign's coming to a close and you're saying, hey, you know guys, um, once this campaign's over, I've got an idea for a campaign, what do you think about that? So that way you've introduced it to the players, you kind of plant that seed so people are thinking about what their players are going to, or what their characters are going to be, and of course if you're, if you're with GURPS and you've got people that have played GURPS before, one of their first questions is going to be, well how many points are we? So that's when you need to have that figured out. Once you start introducing it, you need to know what that that point cost is, is going to be. And that really should kind of fall into line as you're doing that other stuff. It shouldn't You shouldn't have to rack your brain at that point once you introduce it to people. Um, and, and talk talk the, the, the players, your, your group, talk, talk them kind of through it before you actually sit down and play it for the first time. Um, 
I've played, and it's and it's usually a, a system like D and D. I know I've ragged on D and D a lot in my videos. I've had fun times playing D and D, but I've also had a lot of stupid times playing D and D because it was just okay. Everyone make a character, and then we just jump in and we're kind of forced to be this party, and I. I've never gotten the depth of character development, character creation, and um, just immersive group storytelling, which is what role playing is. I've just never got that out of D and D the same way I have it as GURP. So I, I seriously recommend introducing any concept, even if you haven't converted it, even if you went out and you bought the Conan GURPS books and said, "This is what we're going to play, guys. Let the people." immerse themselves in it before, but if you're going to introduce it to people, and some people might not, you know, well, I guess I've never seen the new Batman movies. Maybe you want to do, I think it's Christopher Nolan as the, the last director. Maybe you like that style better than the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton uh, style from the, the 80s. So you're going to have to watch, maybe watch those movies again with your party, with, with your perspective group and be like, okay guys, this is what I'm thinking, this is the world, because you, you're going to want to clarify that stuff too, especially if it's, there's a lot of information on that particular uh, setting, like, like Batman, or even like, uh, like I said, uh, the Robin Hood and Arthurian legends, there's just so much buried into it. That, your once you introduce it, but that goes along with what I said, narrowing it down uh, before you introduce it. But you're going to want to let your players know and make that source material available to them. If you're using um, specific um, books or movies or video games. Make sure the, the players have access to it. Make sure the players can watch these books or watch these movies and read these books or the TV show or whatever it happens to be and and make sure that they, they, they have a good idea of what that, that world's going to be. Otherwise, it would be much more difficult um, for them to really immerse, your, immerse themselves and really get into it and be on the same page as the, the GM and the rest of the party. Um, and then kind of the final s step really to um, any any conversion is that first night um, or that first gaming session where everyone's got their character made and they're introducing they're being introduced to the world and introduced to each other that's that's the real moment that you're gonna set the tone for the rest of the campaign, set the tone for the game world, um, and really show the players. Of course, they've they've seen the movie, read the books, and whatever. But once you once you start interpreting that as a GM for them for their characters, that's 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 really the the final step and and that first gaming session is really kind of the make or break moment for any any campaign whether you've converted something or not whether it's going to be something that clicks with the the individual participants or not um, this video has gone on for almost 20 minutes which is more than I wanted it to but uh, there's kind of a lot to cover when you're when you're converting. I mean, the conversion process, depending on what it is, if you really hadn't put a lot of thought into it as a conversion piece, it could take you several weeks. Um, it also depends on uh, how, how deep your, your gaming group, which you should probably know the, the likes and tastes of your gaming group, you know, how deep they really like to, to get into a world, how, how interactive they like to get. So anything from a couple weeks to maybe a month or two depending on the amount of free time you have and um, how much material you have to 
to work with too, or how much material you have to, to build. Um, if you're having to do stuff uh, like make lots of maps or come up with uh, weapon sheets, well, that's going to be something that's just going to take a lot of time. So, um, But thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll get more of these out uh, a little shorter, but uh, more often than I usually do. Thanks for watching.